Hello and welcome to Show of the Week. I'm Mike. And I'm Jane. And this week on Outside Xbox, I went on and on about space. Space, 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 space. Did you? I didn't notice. I like space, all right? But I enjoy other things as well. I'm eclectic. Like what other things? Uh, roller coasters, Mike? They're like space, but you're in a roller coaster carriage instead of a spaceship, and you're on rails, and also there's air. Oh, and though when you're in space, no one can hear you scream, when you're in roller coasters, everybody can hear you scream. Screamride is brought to you by Frontier Developments, the studio behind Elite, as well as Thrillville and Roller Coaster Tycoon, so they know what they're doing when it comes to coasters. Unlike in those games, though, you don't build any shops, hire any staff, or clean up any vomit. Screamride is all about the coasters themselves in three main modes. Screamrider mode lets you build your own roller coaster and then ride it like a kind of first person racer. You need to take into account things like physics and gravity and the limits of the human body. You want your ride to generate maximum fun and manageable nausea without hurling people into the ocean or derailing the car. Next is Demolition Expert, where you fling cabins of screaming people at buildings to destroy them. Destroy the buildings, I mean, not the people, though I can't imagine the people come out of it that well either. Awaiting your throw. Exceptional damage. Structure status critical. Then there's Engineer Mode, which challenges you to build rides with specific requirements and limited resources, such as finishing a partially completed coaster, or creating a ride that keeps the riders below a certain nausea level. I mean, technically they're not nauseous if they're dead, right? OK, yes, it is fun to launch riders off to their doom, but there is a certain satisfaction to be had in creating the perfect thrill ride as well. That said, there are an almost overwhelming number of options to choose from, and it can be easy to get bogged down in submenus. Also, bad news for those with grand ambitions of building a dinosaur ride or the world's fastest ghost train, you can't theme your roller coasters. Everything has this kind of trials fusion futuristic -y look to it, which makes everything feel a bit flat and sterile, but at least you've got Daft Punk supervising your experiments, so that's good. Screen Riders out this week for Xbox One and Xbox 360, and there's a demo you can grab if you want to have a go at creating a coaster yourself. Just make sure you remember to actually finish the track before you send people round it. I'll forget my own head next. So you build roller coasters, uh -huh. and then people ride on them. Right, and then they die. Why would they die? Are well, you telling me these aren't deadly roller coasters? Why would you build a deadly roller coaster? I don't know, Mike, but that's all we seem to get in video games. It's hard to believe anyone takes their kids to an amusement park when this is the sort of thing they're expected to ride. Ah, another group of recruits for my army of the undead. The Carnival of the Damned from Curse of Monkey Island is great fun. It's got a pie cannon, a guess your weight booth, free snow cones. I have sweet cones, meat cones, cold cones, mold cones, bold cones with lime, cones with slime. <laughs> Maybe leave the snow cones. The park's main attraction, though, is the Roller Coaster of Death, a twisty, turny thrill ride that corkscrews inside a giant monkey head and is not so much death defying as, well, death causing. <laughs> yeah, the Roller Coaster of Death dips all its riders in molten magma, turning them into skeleton pirates ready to join the ghost pirate LeChuck's army of the damned. Still, it looks pretty fun up to that point, and still less unpleasant than one of those snow cones. <laughs> Bye now. Lakeside Amusement Park in the Silent Hill series is the holiday destination for families that want to give their kids memories to last a lifetime. They can visit the haunted house. A family of four was sliced into bloody pieces in this room. Oh, the cries of the children. Oh, okay, well they can meet park mascot Robbie the Rabbit. Yikes, surely something called the Happy Carousel will be good times? I have to beat the horses to death and then I'm attacked by a knife-wielding manifestation of Alyssa Gillespie. Are you guys sure you know how carousels work? 
but yeah, the memories will last a lifetime, that lifetime being about four minutes. Oh man, that's the Screaming Oak! The Screaming Oak is the centerpiece ride in the Whispering Oaks amusement park in Left 4 Dead 2, and to be honest, it's a bit unusual. Just let me ride the Screaming Oak once. Man, when are we ever going to be here again? First of all, it's a wooden roller coaster, which are rare these days, having been mostly phased out in favour of steel roller coasters. Secondly, you uh, send the car flying off ahead of you and then run along the track yourself. And thirdly, it's swarming with zombies? Maybe I should have played with that one. Still, at least Ellis is enjoying himself. Man, it is like we bought the park and got every ride to ourselves. You know, that was the third thing I was going to do if I ever won the lottery. If you ask me, the Ferris wheel from Indie Brawler Gang Beasts doesn't look up to code. There are no safety rails, safety glass or safety bars. Plus, the pier is falling apart and it's covered with drunk guys trying to throw you into the ocean. Plus, there's no supervisor. Unless these guys are the supervisors? Probably not the supervisors. Me and my partner want to ride the cone of tragedy. That's right, we've lost our will to live. I'm not supposed to, but what the heck? In addition to its other fine attractions, such as the Tunnel of Love and the Hall of Oddities, the Cushman Brothers Carnival from Sam and Max Hit the Road features a ride called the Cone of Tragedy. I say a ride, it's more being hung upside down from your ankles and beaten senseless than an actual ride. Not sure what the Swiss Army knife attachments are for either. In any case, it's worth riding with someone who knows CPR. Ooh, I feel tragically empty. Me too. It's as though an integral part of my essence has been ripped from my being. Let's do it again! Now it's time to see what you've written in the YouTube comments and on the sandwich boards you wear as you parade up and down our studio. Uh, the end is nigh, apparently. And something about Halo 5, I can't quite make it out. It's probably positive. First up, your comments on last week's show about Resident Evil Revelations 2 and four forgotten Resi games in need of an HD remaster. So, if you were Capcom, what would you be doing right now? That's right, frantically remastering every old Resident Evil game in existence. A few of you asking where your favourite Resi was, like Trevor Smith who says, Why no Resident Evil 4? Why didn't we include Resident Evil 4 in a list of forgotten Resident Evil games that need an HD remaster? Yeah. Well, one, no one's forgotten about it, and two, it already has an HD remaster, it came out in 2011. Couldn't they just remaster it again? Sure. Carl Baker talks more sense, saying, Would love to see a Dino Crisis remake. Yeah, I think that definitely qualifies as a crisis. Finally, Scott Muntz is confused, asking, How do you get eaten to death? Ask Richard, he's pretty good at it. Chris, stop! No! <laughs> Richard, what is he like? Moving on, your comments on this video about how these fighting game characters are super obviously based on real people. Such as with Fei Long, Forrest and Martial Law, and Liu Kang, all of whom were based on, you guessed it, Dame Judi Dench. Off 234 stops by to ask, what about Mike Tyson from Mike Tyson Punch-Out? Who's he based on? He doesn't say, that's no help, Arf. Next, the learned soldier seems to be mostly learned about Star Wars lore, saying, okay, I'm sorry, but unless that katana's augmented with cortosis weave, Vader's lightsaber went through it like butter. Sweet, delicious, Creamy. Anyone else craving popcorn? <laughs> kind of veered off topic a bit there. Oh, sorry, I was thinking about popcorn. Finally, Jake Driver writes simply to complain, Judy Dench, 2 OP. And for that reason, she is banned from major tournament play. Finally, your comments on the latest episode of our ramshackle playthrough of zombie drop kicking simulator Dying Light. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's just sliding through the pool of blazing petrol. Connor Reeves reckons he's figured out your playstyle, saying, I can sum Mike up in two words. Explosions. I had another word, but Mike blew it up. That word was explosions again in a bigger font. Connor McKechnie, meanwhile, says, You could say Jane has a flair for this game. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Making flares, making flares, in a hurry, making flares. Finally, Cerberus Lives raises an interesting philosophical point, saying, Is there a way to do an electric dropkick? Hashtag does it electric. Maybe if you wore metal shoes and had some kind of battery. No, 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 no. I wasn't going to do it. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to be getting on with. Not on electric dropkicks. That's it from Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button, which, depending on your display device and viewing circumstances, will be somewhere around here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. I really don't think this is going to work. Honestly, it's going to be amazing.
I'm okay.